when Matthew asked me to give this talk, I immediately knew what I wanted to talk about. A little fun fact about me, I am obsessed with snails. I don't really know how it started, but it's bad, y'all. Like, I will draw them everywhere. Like, dirty car windows, it's like a random parking lot. I'll just go through and draw a snail on every single one that I pass. And every standardized test I've ever taken, I've like covered the front page in snails just to like make the graders laugh. I probably get points deducted, but it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and one time in middle school, I almost got ISS because I drew so many snails on a desk, like it covered the entire desk, you couldn't see the wood anymore. But she was too weird, like my, te my teacher was too weird now to come talk to me about it. So she like told my best friend at the time to tell me to not do that again because it was kind of weird and I would get ISS for it. And I'm like, thanks lady. But Anywho, just in case y'all didn't think I was a complete nerd by now, um, I have some fun facts about snails if you want to hear them. Yes. Yes. Okay. So snails have over a thousand teeth. What? Yeah. And they're like in rows, and so when they bite into things, it's like a little perfect square. So if you see a little square out of a leaf, it's probably a snail. Yeah. Um, snails are hermaphrodites. I'm just going to lay that on there. Um, <laughs> The largest snail ever found was um, 15 inches long and like two pounds. So that puppy that Lily had last week is about like that size. It's like how long? <laughs> 15 inches. <laughs> oh, and snail shells are made of calcium, like what your fingernails are made out of. And they can do this cool thing called estivating. It's kind of like hibernating. And so in unfavorable conditions, they can just bury down in their um, shell and the slime that they make, they can like harden it and make like a wall. It's kind of weird. And they can just close off from the world until they deem conditions favorable, bit favorable again to come back out. And I'm kind of jealous of them for that, honestly. Because like there are moments in my life where I wish I could hide in a shell. Like kind of like right now, that would be a great time. <laughs> Anywho. Um, <laughs> How do they get their shell? How do they get their shell? This limestone has a lot of calcium in it. And so around here they just chill out on limestone rocks. Are they born with it? Show? They are born with it. Oh, so it just keeps, does it, grow, it just keep grows, grows yeah, with them. Yeah. So mm -hmm. um, but anywho, that's kind of why I appreciate snow so much, is because they forced me to rethink what unfavor unfavorable conditions really are. Because, um, yeah. And anywho, this really smart biologist lady, she, in this book I'm reading, yeah, it's about snails, sorry. She said that, um, snails are formed to fit the life they are meant to lead, and I think that's pretty true about people too, because God made us beautifully and wonderfully, and he gives us all the tools and abilities we need to go out to do his word, so I think that's pretty cool. But sometimes he disguises our little abilities that into things that we may not like or appreciate or think are cool, and I know for me, um, I thought my abilities and skills that I have are not ideal, especially my first two years in high school. I was not very confident with who I was in every um, environment I was in. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, I wasn't really, I didn't feel like I would fit there. I thought, I was like, oh no, I need to change this one thing about me. I'm too much of this, I'm too less of this. I need to just be different. And I, especially, in school, um, socially, I was like kind of shy. I still kind of am, but I would only have like a couple little friends that I would talk to, and I wouldn't really branch out or anything. And so when we got to high school and they had more friends, or they started talking to other people, I was just kind of like chilling by myself, and it was really sad. And then in schoolwork, academically, all my friends are geniuses. Like these right here, geniuses. And I just got really self conscious. Because I thought I wasn't, especially in math. I'm trash at math. I don't know about y'all, but yeah, not my thing. <laughs> and so in math, I would just sit there and like freak out and not ask any questions. Because I'm like, Emily, what the heck is wrong with you? Why can't you think of this answer as fast as these people can? And then I'm a dancer. And so at dance, I would get really sad and compare myself to other people. Because um, the ideal dancer body is super tall, long legs, and super flexible. And I look at my 4'9 self and I'm like, something's not adding up here. So I get really sad in dance class and just kind of shut down, which was not fair to my teachers. And then at youth, I stopped going to church for a couple of years because honestly, I was just kind of mad at God. 
I was like, why did he have to make me this way? I'm not happy with who I am. I don't want to be like this. If I could just be a little bit taller or a little bit better in math than I am in English or something like that. I was just angry. I'm like, what the heck? Why did you make me this way? But anywho, like I said before, um, snail shells are made out of calcium and they have to have it to grow and to get bigger and to be healthy. And there have definitely been people in my life that are like my calcium and they force me out of my shell and to go do things that God would want me to do, good things. And anywho, um, those people are like my teachers. This year especially, I've had some really cool math teachers actually who forced me to ask questions and be extroverted. And I have friends who I got involved with a really cool group of people last year. They're all graduating now, which kind of sucks, but they <laughs> helped me grow as a person and all these people in this room right now. Appreciate y'all. And then at school, I mean at dance, my teachers know I'm not a ballerina by any means. And so they let me teach a little hip hop class at my dance studio, which is really sweet to these six year olds. And every week, those little guys remind me how much I love to dance and how much I want to instill that love in other people too. And then in youth, of course, Matthew, he texts us every week, the seniors, and invites us to come to youth and make sure you're coming and text us the question and says, that's awesome to everything, even when it's not so awesome. <laughs> 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 and he also gives us like vol um, volunteer opportunities every week to go out and to do things, which I wouldn't have normally done before, so that's really cool. And he actually told me this story the other day of this servant and this slave, not slave, this master and his servant, and every day his, this master needed his servant to go get some water, and he would carry these two buckets to the well, and he would fill them up. But one of the buckets had a little hole in it, and by the time he got back to the master's house, one of the buckets was only halfway full because of the hole. And the bucket was really self-conscious about this. He's like, what the heck? You need to fix this immediately. Your master's going to get mad at you. Like, this is not good, bro. You need to change me, please. And he's like, oh, hold up, dude. Just wait. Look on your side of the trail next time we go get water. And so the bucket's like, okay, fine. And then they go, and they walk down the trail. And he looks over on his side, and he sees beautiful flowers. And he doesn't see them on the other bucket side. And he's like, oh. Oh, okay. And he realizes that he's been watering the flowers the whole time. And the master, the servant said the master's favorite thing to do is to take a walk by those flowers every day. And so the bucket was realized that he was doing some good in the world and when he thought he wasn't. And so my message to y'all is um, y'all may not think that everything about you is perfect. I know I don't think that. And we all have our insecurities and things that we don't like about ourselves that we wish we could change. But God made us beautifully and wonderfully, and everything about us is in his image. And we can go do pretty cool things if we let, if we don't let that stop us. And he loves us just the way we are. So will y'all pray with me? Dear God, thank you for being you and for making us us. Please give us the strength to use our perks to do beautiful and wonderful things in your name. Amen.